So let's unpack that for a bit because we have a podcast full of overachievers, mm. like the two of us here. So share with us sort of your meta process of finding the teacher, the right guru or master or the sensei that's worthy of your time in terms of learning, acquiring a new skill. It all depends on which area of your life you want to delve into. First, right. I figure out what's the problem I'm trying to solve, all the resources, then all the questions that I want to answer around that problem. And then what are the resources that would get me 80-20, 80% of the results with 20% of actions? Hell, that's even the process that we follow with our VIP cybersecurity blueprint. We're not asking CEOs to become CTOs. Hell no, I don't want to become mm -hmm. a CTO, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the CTO is there for a reason. They fill a particular uh, purpose and at a much higher level than I ever could. But I am responsible for the culture of the organization and therefore, I want the 20% of actions that are going to allow me to drive 80% of the culture uh, that's going to get most of the results necessary. Same thing with everything else. When I started uh, cybersecurity, I asked myself the question, what's the experience that's going to push me the farthest, fastest? When I wanted to become an entrepreneur, what's the experience, right? Diving off the deep end that's going to allow me to get uh, what I want to get out to the market fastest. At that time, it meant move yourself from New York City and a cushy investment banking job into a startup situation in Hong Kong, live in a shitty apartment for the first year and a half because you're trying to build a company. Whatever it is, you've got to strip down all the nonsense and, and drown out the cacophony and just go at it. Focus. Yeah. So one of the realization that I had around the whole idea of 80-20, 100% agree. However, from my reflecting my personal journey, I rarely find the 20% that generates 80% results looking ahead. I can look backwards and say, oh, those 20% generated 80% of the results. So can you project forward, not knowing, not getting into the situation, identify the 20% that's going to create 80% of the results? Yes and no. It depends on what problem you're solving. If mm -hmm. you're an astrophysicist trying to figure out a new planetary uh, or solar system mm. and he's walked in your shoes before you're right. You need to figure out your best estimate of the 20% that's going to get you 80% far furthest. Mm -hmm. Most of the time there are people that have walked in your shoes. So for example, one of the lessons that uh, I needed to learn is how do I build a scalable marketing and sales enterprise? that does not require countless salespeople, countless marketers, and it doesn't require me in that process all the time. When I was CEO of my startup, I was the fundraiser, I was the chief marketer, I was the chief salesperson, and all salespeople always looked to me. That was the biggest crock of poo I've ever seen. And so you learn. But I'm also not the only exec that had that issue. And so I started looking more and more to model the ones that have really been successful in that. Similarly, when I had a spurt last year, pre-COVID clearly, when I was literally traveling 95 plus percent of the time across nine countries, three continents, I was in New York literally one day out of, out of every week on average. And so, and I needed to work out. And my assistant said, boss, I cannot find a gym that's going to allow you to have a membership for three days before you move on to the next country. And so I said, okay, wait a minute. I cannot possibly be the only exec on the road that needs to eat healthy and live healthy. So there's got to be a system. And I asked and asked until I found it. So constantly try to model somebody else that's walked in your shoes 